Hi there, welcome to QA Box. Let's test. If you have not already subscribed to this channel, kindly do so. And if you like the video, give them the thumbs up. Alright, so in this video, we are going to talk about loops. So, what are loops? So, in programming, when we have to execute the same set of statements again and again, right, we don't write them manually, we go for loops. So if you have to iterate over a block of code multiple times or as long as a condition is satisfied, we go for loops. Okay, so an example of that is imagine you have to write the integer numbers from 1 to 100. So are you going to write this line of code 100 times? Certainly not. You will write a for loop. To solve this problem for you and it is going to take only three lines of code and let me write that and then i'll explain the syntax for you so these are the three lines of code that you have to write to print numbers from 1 to 100 onto the console. Let me do one more thing and print the value of i after this for loop. All right. So value of i after for loop okay so you could see that just by those three lines of code you are able to print numbers from 1 to 100 onto the console okay and once the loop is finished the value of i is 101 okay now let's move on to the slide for loops so loop is a control flow statement for specifying iteration which allow code to be executed repeatedly and in our particular case, this line of code was executed 100 times. All right. We have worked with arrays. So arrays are what? Collection of items. If we want to iterate over the collection, we go for loops. All right. The execution hinges upon or depends upon a Boolean condition, true or false. If the condition is true, then the loop continues to execute. If the condition evaluates to false, then the loop breaks out. So in the for loop, you could see that statement one is what? Nothing. I'm initializing a variable. What is statement two? In statement two, I'm validating whether the variable that I've initialized is less than 100 or not. So this condition, this, this, this is a comparison operator. It would return as what? True or false. All right. So as long as this condition is satisfied, anything that I write between these two braces, this particular block of code will continue executing. Once this code is executed, the value of the variable is incremented. All right, so this is your step one, if you want to say that way. Step two, if it is true, this is your step three, right? And then step four and this cycle will keep on going until this condition is satisfied the moment this condition evaluates to false this code is not executed okay so therefore when i ran this we saw that 100, 100 was the last number 101 is the value after the loop is executed so 101 is not less than equal to 100 and therefore 101 was not printed here and this is the syntax right for no spaces these brackets then these three statements separated by semicolon then block of code which you want to execute okay so statement once statement one is executed one time before the execution of the code block so this is initialization statement 2 defines the condition 
for executing the code block this is your condition if the condition is satisfied the statements would be executed what are these statements this block of code and then the value would be incremented or decremented in one of the video we talked about pre increment and post increment operators so this is a post increment operator and if the condition evaluates to false we end the for loop okay so now let's work on an array all right so let's create an array let array is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 all right and let's write an array to iterate over this particular array statement 1 initializer okay so we say where i is equal to 0 because we know that in array the index start with 0 semicolon statement 2 we have to iterate over all these elements and we need to know the length of this array and we know that so as long as i is less than array dot length because array dot length will give us 5 and if we look at the index it's going to be 0 1 2 3 and 4 so 4 will be less than 5 right so therefore we always go with length never use hard coded values even if you are seeing that you know it's going to be less than 5 always go for this because when you work into the real projects you will not be working on the static arrays all right this is a static array because you can see that it's, it's available to you before even you have started executing your program but in the real time projects for example you might be hitting an api and getting a response back so you might or, or let's say uh, response of users so at times you will find 100 users other times you know there might be more users are added and you'll see greater than 100 so it's never fixed therefore always go with array dot length and we say i plus plus okay so if we never increment this value so what will happen if we never increment this value we enter into a never ending loop because this condition this variable will be initialized again and this condition will always be satisfied make sure that you use the increment okay this is the problem or mistake that most of people make when they work with while so make sure that you provide the increment or decrement condition okay so now what do we have to do so we have to say console.log we want to print all the values how can i access the value it's that simple array and the index using computed member access operator all right and we are working on the index isn't it so first time the index would be zero and that would return as one second time the index would be two third time sorry first time the index would be zero then one then two then three then four so using this we are able to print all the values all right let's hit enter and you could see that we are able to print all the values okay so that's the purpose of for loop so if you have to repeat some set of statement multiple times go for that if you do work on collections again you have to use for loop okay besides for loop there are two more loops available into javascript and they are pretty much like for loop one is for in and the other is for off okay so let's see an example of for in so if i just use this again and right not this one so let me use this array let uh, this is equal to one and this is the syntax or uh, um, index and if i say in here let me write this again so what is the syntax all right for all right 
so for in work with indexes it works with the innumerables all right and we'll, we'll read more about that so i say in i in right array and you can say console dot log and if you print i it will print the indexes as you could see 0 1 2 3 4 if you want to print the values what do you have to do you have to again use computed member access operator okay so that's how you will fetch the value from foreign all right so it's an interesting loop let's let's do one more thing so let me pick uh, an object computer and if you want to fetch all the keys of an object still you can use for in all right so you can say key in computer okay and if you just type console.log and you can say key so it will not this it has to be key not keys so you could see that all the keys of this object width height screen start comp right these all are printed okay so this is your for n all right uh, there is one more but before we move on let's understand foreign should not be used to iterate over an array where the index order is important why because array indexes are just numerable properties with integer name and are otherwise identical to general object properties there is no guarantee that's important for us there is no guarantee that foreign will return the indexes in any particular order so if you expect that the result should be returned in a respective order you should not use this all right the foreign loop will return all enumerable properties means numbers indexes including those with non integer name and those that are inherited okay so it will return everything to you because of the order of iteration is implementation dependent iterating over an array may not visit elements in a consistent order and therefore we should not use that okay and as per mozilla mdn they are saying that it may be most practically used for debugging purpose not recommended for use with arrays all right so the other one is off it works with the value so let's see that and if we can so we say value of and then you don't need to use this because we work we are working with value directly and if you do so hit enter you see that all the values are returned to you right so we have seen for loop the syntax of it in what all conditions we have to use for loop how to use for loop what is the relevance of this increment and decrement then we have also touch base on for in and for off okay just one more thing before we move on so we looked at this example all right and this way we were able to return all the keys of an object there's a much better way uh, just for you know sharing purpose so we can say object dot keys and object is a class which has got the method all you have to do is provide the name of the object and it would return you an array of keys so let's store that in a variable and now if you do array keys so you get that you have access to an array so this array has got all the keys all right so we don't uh, as recommended by mdn let's not use foreign and you know uh, if you have to find out all the keys this is a much better way of finding all the keys of an object i hope you like the video thank you so much bye bye